welcome to Home Space and Reason, a podcast about creating a home that thrives. Hi there, I'm Christina Browning, your host. If you know your home could be so much more than it is, I discuss home functionality, aesthetics, and automation. I'm a realtor in Portland, Oregon, and a home functionality coach. I geek out on every subject imaginable regarding your home and yard, challenging you to think of your space differently to get the most out of every square foot. I pose questions for you to think through about your space and your reason. This podcast is all positive, offering you virtual fist bumps and celebrating every win. Remember, there's no such thing as perfect, but you can still aim for your best every day. Join me on social media by searching for the handle Space and Reason. In this episode, let's discuss aesthetics and the functionality of crystals. They can be visually stunning because they come in breathtaking colors and shapes. The natural textures and formations are art in their most simplistic form. Some are more popular because they're believed to cleanse spaces or enhance certain energies. That is why I thought today we'll discuss crystals because they occupy two of the six circles of my home functionality chart, both aesthetics, because they can quite literally be natural art, making a space visually beautiful, and they can be helpful if you believe in their ability to relax, heal, cleanse, or focus. When you put these stones in places where you spend a lot of time, they can potentially make you feel lighter and happier. And who wouldn't want that? One day I was in a coffee shop and I happened upon a beautiful colored small box that read meditation stones and it caught my eye it was beautiful the writing was gilded and underneath it it said an introduction to meditating with crystals i was so delighted that i bought it with a soft magnetic enclosure and the inside adorned with graphic descriptions, I found this to be the perfect introduction for me. When trying to find this online for you, shopgeo.com is where I sourced it from, and I found they have healing stones, grounding stones, chakra stones, and meditation stones, all small collections contained in small boxes that are beautiful. I was delighted to learn that they're in Mason, Ohio. When I read more about them, I found this. Our team is a small, diverse group of people who all share a fondness and love for the Earth's natural luxuries. We see the beauty in the small things and create meaningful, one-of-a-kind items that radiate good vibes with a chic and sophisticated aesthetic. Each individual crystal has been hand-picked by our team to go on their own personal journey. Every mineral, stone, crystal, and gem 
is a unique gift from our planet. And our goal is to show and celebrate this in all of our work. This love for Earth's beauty is what has bonded our team for the past 41 years. As always, I'll put a link to them in the show notes. As I mentioned, the first crystals I was introduced to was through the sweet little box of meditation stones. So I invited Marjorie Brialt on the show. She is a transformational energy for life coach, medium, and healer. I wanted to know about her meditation space in her own home. And my home, it's all about intentional practices. So I have a six-year-old in the morning. We do breath work together. We do some sort of movement to move our bodies in the morning. Sometimes we'll do a mantra together. So we're also singing it out in a different way. Sometimes we'll do drumming in the morning before school and before I go off to work. I have an altar in my meditative space. Being intentional around creating that altar and what that space looks like. Having intentional crystals that are in that room that help bring calmness and clarity to your mind. Whether it is clear crystal quartz or you're bringing in a moss agate or you're bringing in rose quartz or you're bringing in selenite or you're bringing in intentional crystals for what whatever you want that room to be. So if it is a meditative and yoga space, so many crystals apply to having that clear mind. For me, I also have a salt bowl. Salt is really cleansing to your energetic field, but also cleansing to the energy in your home. So I have several different types of salts and herbs in a bowl. I use that for grounding exercises. I use that to help clear the space, to help keep my energy alkaline. So there's lots of different things you can intentionally place within that meditative space um, while also making sure it's a calm environment. It's quiet. I like to have a lot of colors. I myself really connect with things in the rainbow. So I really love to have those rainbow colors present in my meditative space. Some people like earthy tones. Some people like sky colors. Some people want muted tones in that space. So finding out what is going to resonate with you the most when you're in that space, because it is all about you and your intentions. So tell me a little bit about mantras. Can you touch on that? Because a lot of times I catch myself needing to repeat something positive in my head if I'm having an especially difficult day or week, or if I'm not feeling good physically. Sometimes I feel like mantras are really helpful. When you're doing the mantra as a form of meditation paired with that breath work, the more you're doing it, the more that you're energetically going into the words, which allows for a different type of meditative experience. Some people like a guided meditation because it's giving their brain something to do when they're meditating. Some people like the mantra experience because it's connecting the the breath and, and the words into what they're doing as well. And so the the repetition of the mantra helps to really like download it into the cells of your body with doing that intentional, rhythmic, repetitive mantra. For me, when I'm doing guided meditations, I'm typically looking on YouTube um, or I'm, I guess Spotify is where I find some of my guided meditations as well or my flow music. So I like to work with Mitchell Gaynor, who is a doctor and a scientist and a researcher who found that the healing power of sound has the power to transform our cells. I also like Lisa Miller. She's a doctor who talks about the awakened brain and how our sense of spirituality really changes the way our brain functions. And that's true on like a a scientific level. So finding those types of people out there and then following them is what I do. Well, we will certainly put a link in the podcast notes for the folks that you mentioned, as well as some of the meditation sounds that you enjoy on YouTube. Now let's talk a little bit more about crystals. In the living room, it's well thought that stones such as black celestite, angelite, 
and amethyst can encourage relaxation, but for the purposes of aesthetics alone, they can add color and texture to side tables, coffee tables, or bookcases, making a wonderful vignette with a nod to Mother Nature. If you're new to crystals like I am, starting with just one stone at a time may help you to identify which ones you prefer to be surrounded by. Likewise, you can incorporate crystals in a very functional way. I've seen natural agate bookends and quartz crystal tea light candle holders, among other practical incorporations of crystals into your home space. One noteworthy tidbit that I happened upon in my research is that for you folks that are struggling physically and need healing in the bedroom, I found that combining amethyst with citrine is a great combination. Amethyst and citrine are believed by some to have healing properties. Amethyst is often associated with calming and soothing. People believe it can help with stress relief, promote relaxation, aid in meditation practices, and is also thought to purify the mind and clear negative thoughts, promoting clarity and spiritual growth. Citrine, known as the stone of success, or sometimes merchant's stone is associated with abundance, prosperity, and positivity. It's believed to attract wealth, success, and good fortune. Citrine is also thought to have energizing and revitalizing properties, helping to boost confidence, creativity, and motivation. When used together, some practitioners believe that amethyst and citrine can complement each other's energies, creating a harmonious balance that enhances overall well-being and promotes healing on physical, emotional, and spiritual levels. No matter why you may choose to have crystals in your home, your options are bountiful. From the vivid sparkly purples of amethyst to the rich reds of the agate, crystals sit well in the sandbox with many styles from boho to modern. Because it's quite literally a piece of nature that's both timeless and art, It's a win across the board for me. And now for the questions to ask yourself about your home space and your reason. Question number one. Do I have a spot in my home that is especially quiet where I might be able to try meditation? Along with this goes hand in hand. If you have a walk-in closet, have you ever sat on the floor in there? I know that might sound silly. Let me tell you why. I have a very long closet. In the end of the closet, in front of the one window, we have a Peloton. Underneath that, we've got two very long workout mats that run almost the full length. What that allows us to do is both work out on the Peloton, but then do floor work with free weights where you can sit down. I find it to be the most quiet space in the entire house sitting in there on that pad because of all the clothes make it like a natural insulator. It's like a soundproof room. If you have a walk-in closet and you've never tried sitting on the floor in there, I would invite you to get a floor pillow or some sort of little cushion, something that can make it less harsh And have a gander because you will be amazed how quiet it can be. Here's something totally unrelated. If you happen to be a parent of a 
child living in your home right now. I also stash my child's presents for whatever's coming up in the top of my closet. And so if I need a moment, I can always tell them if the door is closed, you're not allowed to come in. And it could be because I'm either stashing a gift I got for you for a future date, or I'm wrapping a gift that I got for you, or I just need some quiet time. If you listen to this podcast regularly, you know that I'm a fan of James Clear. He made a post recently that said, what is something that made you feel proud today? If nothing comes to mind, how can you spend the next five minutes in a way that will make you feel proud I wanted to share that with you because I thought those were powerful questions and you might be able to add those to the questions that you ask yourself today. Since we were talking about crystals today, I reached out to Jeanette at Elemental Clarity, the same Feng Shui consultant that I interviewed in episode 65, all about Feng Shui. I asked her specifically about crystals and she said, when someone first hires me to feng shui with them, it's super common for them to ask, where do I put my crystals? And then they proceed to list them all. I have citrine, tourmaline, quartz, and the list goes on and on. She said, first, you can have good feng shui with or without crystals. Secondly, my personal approach as a classical Feng Shui consultant, do what feels best to you. What is your intention for them? Crystals can wake up, protect, and cleanse energy. Where in your home do you feel you need to wake up, protect, or cleanse energy. Because of their many benefits, crystals work in a variety of areas. When you're sick, you may find that some are helpful near your bed. If you're anxious, you may like carrying one with you. If you're going through a little bit of bad luck, protection at your front door may be what you need. It's easy to overcomplicate crystal placement because it's actually kind of complicated, which sort of defeats the whole purpose of creating a zen, balanced, and blissed space to begin with. Crystals definitely have a purpose and are beneficial, but not if wondering where to put them stresses you out. She says, start with your gut, start with your intuition, Choose the crystals that feel best to you and place them where you feel the energy in your home needs to be broken up, protected, or cleansed. If you'd like to refer to that Feng Shui episode, I always include links in the show notes. Episode 21 asks, what makes people passionate about their homes and what makes a person really love a space? It's surprising to me that so few people really actively love their home with any kind of detectable passion. However, people who do usually approach their home differently than those who don't. If you haven't listened to episode 21 yet, I invite you to, or even if you have, but it's been a couple of years, it may be worthwhile to have a listen again, since oftentimes we retain different things on the second pass. If you'd like more of this kind of content, you can subscribe to Little Bits my weekly newsletter about home functionality with a short video and a thought for you to think through about your space and your reason. Expect short but close inspections of home details. As usual, I pose questions for you to think through about your space and your reasons. Find the link in the show notes. 
Most of us know by now that a room that is overly matchy-matchy feels lackluster. When you get a set of anything, a living room set, a bedroom set, that is a recipe for disaster because matchy-matchy is not a thing anymore. The problem is, how do you choose things that sit well together without matching. This can be especially challenging for those of us who were born in the 1970s when matching was all there was. We have to deprogram ourselves and learn a different way. Episode 20 dives into how we do that. No matter when you started listening to the Home Space and Reason podcast, there is so much meaty content in every episode that it would be a shame to only look forward on what's coming next. I invite you to start at the beginning so you don't miss out on so much of where this started and what we're building on here. As always, I'll put links in the show notes. If you happen to know someone in the market to buy or sell in the greater metro Portland, Oregon area, kindly send them my way. The finest compliment I could receive is the confidence of your referral. As much as I wish reviews and ratings didn't matter, they do. As a listener, I often look at the reviews before deciding to spend my valuable time trying out a new podcast. Your review here, even if it's short, helps others decide with confidence that this is a podcast worth their time. Thanks for sitting in on this conversation about creating a home that thrives. And thank you also for leaving a review. I'll meet you back here for the next episode. (laughs) 